Are you at risk for a faster disease progression? There are certain demographic, clinical, and MRI findings which predispose a given person with MS to have a faster disease course compared to another. If you'd like to hear what those factors are, don't turn away, because that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. There are certain demographic features, clinical features, and findings on the MRI that predispose one given human with MS to have a more aggressive or rapid disease course compared to another. In this video, I'm gonna break those down for you. In case you're curious, I'm on a walk with my dog, River. I've seen other YouTubers vlog and they literally record while they're walking. And I figured, what the heck, let's try it out. I hope it's not too bumpy or bouncy. Uh, if this is too difficult to deal with, definitely leave me a comment down in the comments section below. But I thought I would give it a try. We'll start with discussing demographics. Certain demographic features predispose a given person to have a worse disease course. These include male gender, non-Caucasian ethnicity, onset of symptoms after the age of 40, they also include several cardiovascular risk factors. So individuals that are morbidly obese, have uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled high blood pressure or high cholesterol, tobacco use and sedentary lifestyle. These demographics would predispose someone to be more likely to have a more aggressive or rapid disease course. When considering early clinical activity, onset of progression from the beginning of the disease process is a worse prognostic factor than if you start the disease by having relapses. Amongst people with relapsing MS, having frequent attacks or having attacks with very little time between them is a bad prognostic factor. Not recovering from an attack is a bad factor and having disease activity, having an attack despite taking a disease modifying therapy is an independent risk factor. Not all attacks turn out to be equal. In attacks that involve motor function or coordination, attacks that involve the brainstem are worse prognostically than attacks of sensory deficits or uh, vision problems. Similarly, attacks that involve the spinal cord or that impact sphincter function, in other words, bowel and bladder, have a worse prognosis. The early accumulation of neurological disability in the first five years is a bad prognostic factor as well. Lastly, we consider the MRI findings. In certain MRI features would suggest a worse disease course than others. Having a bunch of uh, white spots, we call that a heavy burden of disease, is a bad prognostic factor. And I'm talking at disease onset. Similarly, the number of black spots or black holes, the more the worse it is prognostically and the accumulation of new spots in the first five years relates to long-term disability. Early evidence of brain volume loss or accelerated rates of brain volume loss, brain shrinkage or atrophy are bad prognostic factors. Having breakthrough MRI despite being on a therapy is in and of itself a bad prognostic factor. And seeing enhancement on the MRI or enhancement on serial MRIs is bad for you. Likewise, infratentorial or brainstem lesions, and in specific, spinal cord lesions, are bad prognostically. So you might be saying, Aaron, so what? What am I supposed to do with this information? Well, I'd like to point out to you that some of these factors are not reversible. You can't change being a boy or being African American, or you can't change uh, having a spinal cord attack but many of the risk factors are in fact modifiable. And obviously, we wanna do everything possible to reverse them. If you have cardiovascular risk factors, unchecked obstructive sleep apnea, or morbid obesity, or a sedentary lifestyle, or tobacco use, a lack of exercise, untreated high blood pressure, untreated cholesterol, poorly treated diabetes, these are reversible risk factors, and if you control them, they will slow the disease course. There's a lot of evidence that suggests low levels of vitamin D increase the disease activity and that supplementing to push levels above 50 also contribute to slowing the disease down, yet again, a modifiable risk factor. Watching carefully on the MRI for the evolution of new spots, particularly in the first five years, is another opportunity to become aware of aggressive disease and to respond accordingly. My point here is, it is very important to me that you know what your risk factors for aggressive disease are 
and you know which ones are modifiable so that you know what things we need to work on together to make you the most awesome you despite having MS. Now a last comment is that frequently a clinician will look at risk factors and if someone has a bunch of them they may gravitate towards a highly effective therapy. And if they don't have those risk factors, they may allow them to use a less efficacious therapy. And I'll share with you that I don't necessarily buy that logic. We aren't good enough to be able to always successfully predict who's going to go on to have aggressive disease. And someone who doesn't have all of these risk factors still could go on to accrue neurological disability. So even though I think these risk factors help us better understand what to expect, I'm of the belief that we want to use the most effective medicine that you're willing to let us use, meaning the, the most effective medicine that you're comfortable with, and we want to start that medicine as early as possible and keep it going for as long as we can. If you'd like to learn more about aggressive disease activity, specifically as it relates to the MRI, check out this video up here. YouTube thinks that you would adore this video right here. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Just click the circular button above my head. My name's Aaron Boster, and thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next live stream or my next video, take care.